Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy new year. Happy 2023. How are you all? Starting it off with a bang with this legendary pattern. Hi, Elena. Hi, Shem. Hey, Delwyn. Hey, Diane. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Randa. Hey, Rachel. How's it going? How are you all? You survived the holidays. You're here. That's big. It's really big. Um, you know, we're carrying on, right? Hey, Christine. <laughs> hey, Margaret. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Malin. <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining the channel memberships, Malin. <laughs> hey, Karen. Hey, Donna. Donna, I have been thinking about you. Hope you're well. Hey, Yolanda. Woo woo. <clears throat> um, so, Needle Sharp, I've mentioned Needle Sharp so many times on the channel. The first year I streamed, I did a whole year of Needle Sharp and I loved it. Um, I, I loved it because it was, it was just really fun, really. You get, you have a lot of choices too. I think I had the, now what's called the So Confident box. Um, and they've added a Kirby box since I was a member. Uh, so there, I think there's four tiers that you can choose from. And, um, and then each month there's a theme. And this month was pajamas, and you got fabric choices within each box tier. So <clears throat> lots of choices. <laughs> hey, Aisha. Hey, Sydney. Hey, Marie. Hello, hello. Um, and so I was pretty thrilled that Mary offered to send me a box. I have made the Carolyn pajamas um, a few times on my channel. It's a pretty old stream. It's, you know, baby staring me. Baby streaming. Okay, Terry. Hello, hello. <laughs> Cooking. All right. Um, and the I've made them also when I kind of did a riff on doing the bottoms as a, as, a, as a woven, and then I changed the top to a knit. And I also like made a um, seam here with the piping, uh, kind of like a baseball jersey, you know? Old fashioned, maybe baby baseball jersey. <laughs> hey, Martina. Oh, cool, Donna. Yeah, I know you've had a lot going on. So someone asked about you the other day and I was like, I think she's just really busy. <laughs> so yeah, it's, a legendary, obviously a very legendary pattern uh, for closet core. Um, I have an old version, so it still says closet case. And I'm pretty sure that this pattern uh, it, it, um, has been updated as well as now has expanded sizes. Um, this, you get everything you need in a needle sharp box to make your project. Everything. The needle for your machine, the thread, all of the notions. Um, she sent a label 
too. I don't know if labels are always in the box, but there, I feel like there is at least one type of label every time, which is really fun. This one's really cute, actually. When I did jeans in one of the boxes, I did the Ash Jeans box, and it came with a uh, faux leather patch for the back of the jeans, which is cool. My daughter paint, hand painted it. <laughs> um, and there's always a treat. There's buttons, too. Like, here's the buttons. These are fabric instructions. And I just keep these little things. I don't know how she gets these perfect every time. Like, I'm kind of jealous. Every time I have to cut little things like this, they're a little bit wonky, <laughs> no matter what I do. So um, there's is like the, you know, washing instructions and content and all that. And I've kept all the ones I've ever gotten from them for like the last five years. And then uh, this time there was added little elf stickers because it was the holidays. So interfacing, elastic, and then enough fabric to make the largest size that the pattern covers. Uh, there's a lot of fabric here because I'm going to be doing the bottom so this week and the top later on in the month. I thought I'd give people a chance to dig out all their stuff they need for the Carolyn pajamas. The bottoms are pretty straightforward to sew, and I thought, thought it's a really great place to start. They're hands down my favorite pajama bottoms to wear. Um, I love them. I, it's funny because I'm a huge fan of pockets and pajama bottoms, but I see a lot of people saying that's a big fat nope for them to so just leave out the pockets. So <laughs> I'll, if, uh, I think these are, oh, they are, they're slash pockets. So I'll show you how to make them without pockets too. You got the pattern, the fabric, then I got pneumonia. What? I'm sorry, Nancy. I hope you're feeling better. We're just not agree with you. Yeah, you're kind of complaining about the snow too. Yeah, it's re it's really great. And if you don't want to sign up for a subscription from Needle Sharp, they have kits. So you can go on their site and they're called kits. And you can, she, she kind of switches between different garments occasionally. And um, they'll, there'll be different garment making kits. So you can just buy one. It's a nice gift, too. This is something I've asked for from my family when they're like, what can we get you for your birthday? This is my funny story. I don't even know if I've told Mary from Needle Sharp this story. But um, one year for my birthday, I asked, my mom said, what do you want for your birthday? And I just don't need things, right? And But I had been wanting, I was missing my Needle Sharp subscription. And I said, I'd like a Needle Sharp box. <clears throat> I think I relayed this through my husband, so he knew what that meant as well, and he just told my mom, my mom's a retired nurse, and so she was like, huh, never one to question our interests. My mom bought me a sharps container <laughs> for, you know, like if you're someone who needs like injections or things like that, you have a sharps container to put your sharps in. <laughs> she figured it out, I think. I think my husband probably was like, no, 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 that's not what she means. And he told her, um, and I got a subscript, a, a gift certificate for a, a box, <laughs> but I also got a sharps box, which was really funny. Well, Shem, you know what? The, I haven't made a whole lot of pajama bottoms, but I really love the way this waistband is sewn because you stitch through the elastic. There's, it's always nice and flat. There is a draw cord um, if you want, and I think that's interesting. Is there not a draw cord option on this? And I just added one to the ones I made on my stream before. I never use the draw cord, I will admit. <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't talked at all today. <clears throat> so um, I really like the way these hang. They hang really nicely, and I also did the optional trim right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little stripe of piping right here. My opinion is that that really makes your pants hang nicer because there's more weight at the bottom. Um, and like I said, I love the pockets. They're, they're slash style pockets, which are much easier to access. I like being able to put my phone or um, let's face it, candy in my pockets because I have a flight of stairs. And so I'm usually carrying a cup of water and either my water bottle or a cup of tea upstairs. And so I can throw my phone and my glasses in my pocket, walk up the stairs, right? And I don't think there's back pockets on these either. They just fit and feel really nicely. So that's about all I can say. They are just, of all the pajama bottoms I own, these are the ones I always hope are clean. 
It's pure and simple. Yeah. But I haven't like interviewed a ton of pajama bottoms, mainly because once I got here, I just stopped. <laughs> I have no complaints about these. In fact, my, uh, my only complaint is the handles on the drawers of my house because they snagged the fake fly on the front. I am the perfect height for everything on my drawer handles. It's like a, a long handle like this and it sticks out, you know, from the, where the posts connect it to the drawer. And that little bit there catches on my pockets and my fly and my belt loops perfectly and it ripped my pants through the through the crotch so I had to repair them so yeah yeah these are I remember being really satisfied with these I'm wearing this sweater and I'm getting so hot I'm gonna take it off so you always include a draw cord on yours Elena yeah so I'm wondering hi Raquel how's it going happy new year um I'm wondering why I had if it's not on the pattern, that's just not something I would normally, maybe someone requested it. Someone probably requested it. Hey, Leah, how's it going? You got the essential box without the pattern, about the pajama pattern separate with every, oh yeah. Nice, Nancy. Oh, I hope you're feeling better soon. Um, is the so essential box mean it doesn't have the, the pattern in it? She asked me if I needed it and I just said, no, I already have it. Hey, Kirsty, how's it going? So, okay, so this right here is some antique, vintage, whatever you want to call it, piping. I just figured maybe I will use the, this. It's 15, it was 15 cents. <laughs> so I didn't do piping on my Carolyn's before. Wait, I feel like I did them on the knit pair maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember now. If you don't have piping or you don't want to use piping, what um, I like to do is just fold over a thin piece of fabric like binding, but it doesn't even have to be cut on the bias. Just fold it in half and insert it in the seam. That's a, a much easier way and, you, and it's less intimidating. I will say piping is really not hard, but if you don't have the cording or your cording's too thick and you're just like, oh, I really want to do this, or your cording's not pre-shrunk and you're just ready to go, I would just fold the fabric in there. Just remember to pre-wash that fabric, please. I cannot stress that enough. I am the biggest offender of someone who will just be like, oh, I'm gonna be so clever and I'm going to use a contrast binding for the inside hem of my dress and it's gonna be so cute if you see the inside. And then I didn't pre-wash it and it really does not do anything good to your hem. You cannot fix it unless you just tear it all apart or cut it off because what happens is your binding will shrink on your garment and it shrinks with diagonal lines all through your hem. It's very, very noticeable. Um, so you don't want this to pull in your cuffs here or here or on your legs just because that you didn't pre-shrink that. Even if what I do, if I'm here at my office, I get it wet and then I iron it dry. <laughs> just do that at least, okay? So, oh, okay, Nancy, that's what I thought. Yeah, flat piping, exactly. Flat piping. All right, so let's get to it. And this is how your box comes, by the way. Like, look at, there's the label. Wasn't that cool? I did a little unboxing. I sound kind of derpy in it, but um, I did do that when I got it. I was pretty excited <laughs> when I got it. I, there's, there's always candy in here too, but I ate that. You guys know me. I, yeah, no restraint with candy. No restraint. Oops. All right. So the funny thing about my pattern is uh, I was pulling out the pieces for the pants only. And I don't know if you have an old printed pattern, you just should go by the pieces that are what's written on them because this list is so bizarre. It's weird. It's like use the button guide for the pants. The button guides for the shirt. The pants, this doesn't even include all the pieces. It's like goes down to here, like here, like pants, waistband, pant pocket, back pant cuff is in the short section. So <clears throat> don't only pull these and cut them out. Make sure you have all of your pieces before you cut. There are layout guides here. I don't know. There isn't layout guides for just the pants or just the shirt. It's only whole sets of pajamas here. So make sure you have all your pieces before you cut. 
Let's do it. All right, this interfacing is for the shirt. I have a bin over here for my shirt and the buttons. We'll put one of these in there, one of these in here. And I think I'll put that label on the top. And look at my fabric. This is the fabric I chose. It's really cute. It's got little mushrooms and it's a little field. It is a little, the face cam is a little more accurate for the color. It's brighter than it looks on the table here. So you just looked at the instructions. Yeah, I think they just guessed where the buttonholes for the drawer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just put it on either side of the center seam. I like the way my draw cord looks and my draw cord that I used on that was, I made it. I used a flat piece of fabric. Like I used by binding. I don't know why I just said flat piece of fabric. <laughs> Isn't all fabric flat? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. All right, I'm gonna move my sweater out of the way so I don't cut it. Um, the other thing I will say is um, if you're on Needle Sharp's um, newsletter list and occasionally she will sell the rest of her fabrics that she put in boxes and I love those sales because she's really good at picking out fabric. I say this a lot, but she really is. She picks out really good fabric. She picks out garment quality fabric. And um, she'll occasionally try and sell the fabric. And a lot of the fabrics I've gotten that you guys have said, oh, you, you've got the best taste in fabric. It's not me. It's because I got it from her site. And it probably helps her out. So <clears throat> you're using the Agnes. Oh, nice, Karen. I pre-washed my fabric. I did not pre-wash those pipings though Sydney and I just this morning was like you know maybe I'll do piping and um I need to switch out my tape here I'm gonna do the the um version with the piping here I'm gonna take that home and wash it tonight with something <laughs> Sydney trying to call me out boy I never used this tape dispenser and uh Kind of funny. Okay, I'm just gonna. This is removable tape, that's why I'm using that. On tissue paper, it works pretty good. This is a uh, just a quilting. Okay, I think I actually called this double gauze for some reason. And it's, I don't think it is. Like the fact that I'm doubting it makes me think, of course, it's not because I don't think that um, I would be doubting it. Yeah, it's not double gauze. I don't know why I had it in my head that this was double gauze. It's not double gauze. Hey, Libby. Fabric content of your box than mine. I got a Buffalo check cotton flannel. This is the, uh, is a quilting cotton, Nancy? which I think is a pretty good fabric for pajamas. It's one of those rare cases where you can actually use quilting cotton. And we all know how much easier it is to find quilting cotton locally to us <laughs> than uh, garment fabrics, right? You know, I folded this so that it wouldn't be wrinkly right out of the dryer and I, that, that whole um, little philosophy kind of crumbled. There's some wrinkly bits in my fabric that I didn't notice. I'm gonna cut out the exact same size. This is the 16. <clears throat> and uh, uh, just remember that this is my, the original pattern. So there are more sizes now and it might look a little different than yours, so. This is like so far off grain and it looks, you know, if I look on camera, I can tell this needs to go way over here. It's a little easier for me to look at the, the screen <laughs> to see if it's on a uh, grain or not. This also is a, this uh, fabric, this is kind of a, a off topic, but something I think is an interesting thing to note. 
this fabric right here is a really good example of how in the garment industry sometimes they will cut off the selvage before they start laying out fabric to cut because it is really tight. And can you see how ruffly that is? You see the little wavy edge right here? I can see that it's pulling, like this isn't sitting flat. Like I can stick my hand into there. That's a really good example. So when you're cutting things out, it's, tr it's good not to use the selvage. I know people like them, but just cutting it off will help relax your fabric a little bit or a lot. And now this fabric is laying nice and flat. So it's just something to think about if you're um, paying attention to that kind of stuff or you're interested in it. <clears throat> Exactly, Libby. Yeah, you could have one leg, one fabric, another leg, another fabric. <laughs> All right, what did I do here? It, I pinned back this edge here, so I think I tapered my pajama legs. I should have looked at my old stream. Look at this taper job I did. <laughs> I just pinned it. So it looks like I go from a size 16 here to a size, let's look, just in case you're interested. Uh, one up from the dots. I go to a size six on the inseam. Ten on the outseam. So if you don't want a really big uh, leg opening, and you want to taper it. That's what I did. I went down a little bit. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, Terry, that this is a size 16. I use, usually in closet core, oh, I could be wrong about this. I feel like I usually cut and sew a straight 12 or 14, like in their jeans. So. All right, let's go for it. Let's see what else we have here though. We have a waistband that is, the grain line is going that way. You can change your grain line on your waistband just so you know it, it won't affect anything. Um, we have our pant, our other pant, and then we have the cuffs. Where's the other cuff though? Front cuff, back cuff, here we go. All right. Oh, do they? That's good to know. I just went by the, the measurement chart. So it's not like I did anything mysterious, you guys, and why I picked a size that's different than the ginger jeans that I've made. I just went by the measurement chart. If you're not sure, just go by what they say there. <laughs> My little hacked taper job here. <laughs> I laugh because, you know, train pattern drafter. <laughs> I'll just wing it. Ginger, that's true. They are stretch. But in general, like with stretch pants and things, you're usually cutting out your measurement. And gingers aren't a loose pant. You would still cut out the same size. It doesn't matter that they're... Wait, let me rephrase that. Just because they make a tight fitting garment or a stretch garment, you are usually still using the same size across all their patterns. But in the case of these, you, you don't. They, they must be a slimmer fitting thing. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter that they're stretch or whatever. You should be using the same size. I have a, a little catch in my blade. All right, I'm not going to notch the center back. I don't need to. I think that's just a pocket notch. I'm not gonna notch that either. I will notch the knee line here on the inseam, just on the inseam. I'm gonna do French seams, so I don't really want a whole lot of notches. I don't really need those others. There's a, there is a notch right here 
on the length and shortened line, that's pretty hard to see. Hi, Maria. How's it going? Welcome. Oops. So another note to, to uh, point out with these pajamas is that because there are hip pockets that are a slash opening, that is why the waistband is separate. So I know a lot of people love to make pajamas as gifts and it's nice when you can just like bang out a bunch of them, right? And if you're looking for something simpler, like someone mentioned, no side seam, like if you don't want pockets, no side seam is one way to go. You can mostly get a pretty good fit even without a side seam, but you are compromising um, some fit when you have no side seam because there's no taper in the leg, right? You have no seam there, right? <clears throat> but that's okay. That's okay for pajama bottoms, right? But um, if you don't have a pocket, you could add the waistband to the top of the pattern piece and cut it included in the pattern piece. And I'll, I'll show you in just a second what I mean. So then you wouldn't have to cut out a, a waistband. You could just do it all in one. These are definitely like traditional pajama, pajamas. If you make these as a gift for someone, you really love them. <laughs> I'm straightening out my wrinkles here. I've got a, a bunch right here. Your two sizes larger in the non-stretch pants versus the gingers. Yeah, it shouldn't be like that though. You know what I mean? You shouldn't have to adjust your size based on how they fit. <clears throat> okay, so if you wanted to, and let, here I can tell you also how much I tapered these. Let's see here. I tapered them. <laughs> so I took out a quarter inch in the, in, in the out seam on both front and back and a half inch, almost five eighths on the in seam, front and back to taper the bottom if you don't like a really huge leg opening there. So see, you could, if you wanted to keep the, the side seam here, but you wanted to simplify these and you're not doing a pocket, and if you don't want to do a pocket, you're going to take this pocket pattern piece here. You're going to fold it on these notches right here at the center of the, you know, line up the side seam here of the pocket, and then here's your pocket opening, right? And you just lay this right under here, line it up to the pocket opening on your pant. And there's your silhouette for your, and your cut line for your front. So if you want to omit the pocket, this is how you would do it. Just don't forget to lay this on here before you cut out your front. And then as far as your waistband goes, you can add this piece to the top here. Just overlap it by the seam allowance. And the seam allowances are 5 eight. so you would take this, I, I would just draw a one and a quarter inch line right here and lay it on here. Now you're gonna lose some of the contour of the waist by doing that. And I would just err on the um, wider side, not the narrower side. It won't be much different, look at that. It's, it, it almost is parallel, right? And you do that front and back. And now you have a pattern piece with the waistband built on and the pocket built on. And you still have a side seam, so you still have a little bit of fit going on there. I feel like this is going to be the year where I talk a lot more about how to make your pa one pattern into lots of different things. Like I have nothing against pattern companies, obviously. I have a lot of patterns. <laughs> I was just looking at one of my highlights. I made this highlight on Instagram in September of 2021 and I made a compilation in, on Instagram. If you go to my bio, it's right there. It's the first little highlight of every pattern I'd ever sewn on my channel, just as like a reference. And I, it was for me, it was a really great way. And I grouped them by pattern company. I have sewn patterns from 42 different pattern companies, which shocked me when I read that. I was like, dang, 42. And, that, and it's been a year and a few months since that. <laughs> and, but the thing is, I didn't sew as many things last year on my channel. So before I had my, channel. I never bought home sew patterns. Um, I didn't even realize they had gotten as good as they would gotten. 
I just drafted my own. I don't expect everybody to be able to do that or want to do that. Like that is definitely, you know, it's not for everybody. <clears throat> but I do like being able to go, hey, you know, I really love, you know, like I'll use Elena's favorite top, the Gilbert top. Elaine has made a lot of the Gilbert top. I've already perfected the fit. I know what I like, how, how long it is here and there. Sorry, I have a lot of wrinkles on this under piece here. So what if I wanna make this a pullover? <laughs> what kind of woven pullovers could I make from this? Or what if I wanna make a long sleeve? What if I wanna make a gathered sleeve? What if I wanted a completely different collar and neckline, you know, that kind of thing, and just take the bones of that garment and make them into lots of other things. I know pattern companies don't want me to say that, but still. Hey, Amy, how's it going? Yeah, exactly. I, uh, I love to do that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna swing this over a little bit. A little bit wrinkly under there. This has a faux fly. If you don't want to do the faux fly, you're going to faux fly. <laughs> faux fly. Um, you're going to put your uh, pattern here. Let me just pull it over a little bit. Ugh, I don't want to get it off grain though. Okay, can you see this very well? So do you see there's a notch here, right here at the top, and then there's a circle here, right? See that circle there? So measure out from this notch toward the fly your seam allowance on any pattern that has a fly and you don't want to put the fly in, right? You're just going to fold it and it's going to line up with your cut edge right here, right? Just like that. And now you don't have a fly. You just have a straight crop seam right there, right? And just make it a little smoother. You don't have to do the fake fly. The fake fly is very easy though. It's a very satisfying fly. Shem, how did your uh, button fly go? You were asking about the other day. My pattern is very wrinkly too. No, no, come here. I see you folded under there. Did I do that side? No, I didn't. All right. Maybe I'll slide this over and show you my trick for cutting interior corners. Super well, nice. Oh, you, <laughs> did you find a pattern or a video and you were like, oh, I've watched this before. <laughs> I can tell where I left off. Here, we'll just fold this like this. Okay, so when you have these corners like this and you're using a rotary knife, for the scissor people probably don't have to worry about this, <clears throat> but when you have these corners like this and you're just a little bit nervous about cutting and then turning the corner, the way I do it is I will cut up to that spot right there and just get as close as you can, and then peel this back like this. And I can tell I can get a little closer, and I just put my knife against that little edge. Let me zoom in for you guys, too. There, there it is. We'll do the, the zoom, the meow. Oh, no. Meow. There we go. Okay, that's as close as I can get, sorry. All right, so you see right here, so I go up from the crotch to that spot right there. And then I just pick this up and peel it away. And I could get, if I can get a little closer, I just put my blade against that and I kind of pull on this piece right here a little bit until it's where I want. 
with the blade resting in it, so it's cutting it. And then now I can just turn the corner. It's, it's kind of an awkward angle I'm showing you because of the camera, but, and then now you can have your interior corner. And then that way you don't go past this point here. If you are still nervous about cutting these kinds of things, what I recommend on a fly is going from the top down to here because you are going to, in a lot of, the a lot of cases for flies, you're gonna clip this right here. You see this big clip right there? You are going to clip that eventually. So it's okay if you go past, but don't go past this way because you don't have like your, you have seam allowance here, but you just don't really want that little cut there. You don't want that to fray. It's not a big deal. Don't sweat it if you do, but you know, if you have to, Oh, buttonhole chisel. That's an excellent idea. I love that. <laughs> oh, mine and pant closures. Oh, that's funny. Hi, Shasha. How's it going? Hey, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I love how you were kind of like, you did a pant closures SPS. <laughs> I was like, are you in the guild? <laughs> All right. So, um... Uh, the, I feel, in my opinion, the most important notches here that I want are the inseam right here. I like this one because I know Closet Core drafts their pants properly and they will have a ease between the knees type of thing going on. And this is, you're going to sew from the hem up to this point, those parts will equal inseam to inseam. But from this point to here, front to back, the, there's going to be a little bit of easing. So I just like knowing where that starts. <clears throat> this notch just matches to the back. This one probably matches to the waistband. So the really, the only other one I want is this one right here is the fold line where the fly is. This is another thing when I, when I notch, I put my rotary knife here and I pick up my fabric and tear it, not tear it, but cut it that way. <laughs> preschooler brain. I don't know about that. Um, and you'll want this dot right here as well. Don't forget this right here. I, I know where it's at. I don't need it. <clears throat> okay. It's always in the same spot, by the way. It's always usually where your fly comes here and it's on the seam line, five eighths in. I used to be like, where, what is this mysterious dot? Like a long time ago, why is it there? How do they know where to place it? It's not a mystery. All right, so in the effort of saving fabric, do I wanna do that? I was gonna say, I'm gonna put my waistband on the length grain, but it is a directional print, you know? They did? Oh, that's awesome, Mala. No, I didn't see that. Let's see, are these big enough for the pockets pieces? Oh, ooh, I think so. Let's just cut this off like this and we'll use this for pockets. Hey, Vestigia, how's it going? Oh my goodness, there's a lot of viewers here today. Welcome in. If you're new here, um, you are welcome to chat, ask questions, any anything you want. like. There's, you're going to see a lot of the same folks talking in chat, but please don't let that make you feel like you're outside the circle because everyone here is welcome to ask questions and stuff. That's not big enough for my pocket. What a bummer. I want to use this. <laughs> it is big enough for my cuffs, I think, though, which should be, by the way, tapered to match my pant. <laughs> they are not, I can tell. <laughs> That's okay, we'll just cut them to fit when we're in the sewing part. So we need uh, two each of these cuffs. My fabric is not directional. It's directional, it's not a one-way print, that's what I mean to say. It is directional. Oh, that's so interesting, Shim. Um, someone in the guild is drafting one from the Fairfield You know, doesn't uh, Wardrobe by Me have one, Shem? 
Is it them? That's cool. I have it. I have to check that out. When did they? When did Helen's Closet release that? I'm gonna slide this up to this one so I can use the same. The same um, cut for both. They did Elena. <clears throat> they took the Cornell down to make some uh, pattern updates to it. Well, there you go, Shim. It's Terry who's doing it. <laughs> Dang, you guys are on like the same brain. How does that make you feel, Terry, considering Shem says he has preschooler brain? On Instagram today? Oh, okay. I haven't been on Instagram except to post the uh, stream starting today. A tunic is longer. Usually low hip, but it can vary. This would probably be a good time to say um, this month in my guild, I have a sewing community called So So Guild, and um, I am making the benefit of the journeyist group, which is kind of the meat and potatoes of the guild available to everybody just for this month and that means you can come to workshops get help from me for anything like I'm I I'm telling you like I definitely like drop everything and dive into whatever your project is like I can't figure out how to sew this collar I will cut out the pieces and sew it right there with you in the workshop uh, if you have fitting drafting sewing anything like that I'll give you four ways to sew something. That's what workshop is, and they happen four times a month. Um, I also do skill building sessions, and if you end up joining as a journeyist, you get all the foundational skill building sessions from last year, which are these very, very, very in-depth <laughs> things that um, like, I just share all of my knowledge in in a really organized way with videos and a PDF. And then now I'm doing monthly skill building sessions that are meant to, they're gonna be live, and they're going to, they're intended to help you on your sewing or whatever. There's going to be a theme, cutting, sewing, drafting, and fitting. Every month, there's going to be one of those. And they are meant to help you on whatever you're making. So they're more generalized, but specific really to the skill. And then, what's the last thing? Oh, Ask a Sewing Question Show. We have a monthly show that's really fun. And we also, so people can call in and ask a question um, or we can dish about any sewing drama or whatever, I don't care. Um, it's the most candid you'll see me be. Um, and then we also have a huge component of the show now which is reviewing newly released patterns that have come out since the last Ask a Sewing Question show. And there's usually a lot of those. And we go, we look at them, we look at the sizing for them, we look how they fit and I'm candid, so. <laughs> All right, these are the front and the back cuff. But that is the sosoguild.com. Just check it out. Journeyist, uh, and there's there's three different groups in my, in my guild. And Journeyist is the one that gives you all those kinds of like hands-on things. Thanks, Terry. I thought Tune had a popover placket and a more pronounced drop shoulder. Yeah, and there's usually side slits too. Yeah, exactly, and what Anna said as well. <laughs> oh, oh, Shem, uh, folkwear patterns. Oh, Elena just got it too. Folkwear patterns has a lot of tunics. They're gonna be more based on cultural clothing there's some really beautiful patterns in their library though. All right. I would really like this to go all the way across and it doesn't. <laughs> Wah! <laughs> 
But um, I should also say that the guild is free to join. You can just join it and hang out. Um, it's like a on online. It's like it's like a very sophisticated Instagram, but there's no data mining, and it's all sewing related. Like you can post about your project or ask a question about a project, and someone's going to answer it and comment on your post. As opposed to, I know a lot of people have Instagram, and they're like, only my friends and family. <laughs> Follow me, they don't care about my sewing. We care. <laughs> so. <laughs> right, Amy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, here's my waistband here. And then will this fit over here? Oh, I love that. Doesn't, you know, I can't get them there, but you know. At least it's a little bit of the fabric. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? Happy New Year. I want my narrow weights here. I got a little off there. One of the viewers sent me this rotary knife because it's got one button changing of the blade <laughs> to be fair i was using i've been using the same rotary knife <laughs> this is the original <laughs> like this is when it came out <laughs> these ulfa blades <laughs> i'm still using that one those things are built to last <laughs> all right we want the center notch on this why isn't there a center notch Okay, we'll add a center notch. <laughs> I don't know why there's no center notch, so we're just going to fold this. It's kind of interesting that there is... The front waistband is the same width as the back waistband. That's very interesting. That's not usually the case. Your front's usually narrower. It is an elasticated waist, so you can probably, you know, move it around so that you can get them the same front and back. But if you end up fitting these and your front is different than your back, don't forget to change your pattern piece for your, your waistband too. Hi, Ray. Happy New Year. No, there is, there are, there are tunics there, Yolanda. I know what you're talking about. I have that pattern. It's right under the table here. I've made it. <laughs> and I gave it away. <laughs> Man, I was so lame in my 20s when it came to things like that. I'd be like, I'm going to take this French cheesemaker's smock. I'm going to make it in Liberty of London fabric. I'm going to pleat all of the little pleats down the center front and do all of this stuff. And then I'm going to wear it for a year and then give it away because I'm not sentimental and really lame sometimes. I wish that's one, that is one top I wish I would have never given away. It's even the one they used to photograph when I won a, a design award. I was wearing that. <laughs> I thought it was special enough to wear to that, but then I just got rid of it. Uh, well, the, the thing with folk wear, Shim, is that the patterns are designed to be sewn accurately to the time and country of the, the time period that the pattern is from and the country of their style of how they made the garment. So that impacts the sizing and the fit quite a bit because you're not going to have um, set and sleeve armholes in the traditional way. They may use techniques like, uh, you know, at the time people didn't have scissors and not everybody had a pair of scissors. So they tore their fabric so all pieces are rectangles. So I don't know if that really helps you, but Uh, 
Oh, I didn't see Adrian. I didn't say hi to someone named Adriana. Where did you see that person, Ray? <laughs> Hello, I didn't see you. You made a whole wedding party worth of clothes from folklore patterns back in 1911. Dressed 11 shirts. To, oh. <laughs> Gosh, that's right. I actually did the same thing. I did a groom's shirt out of one of their patterns. Yeah, the French cheese. <laughs> but do you like French cheese makers? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> okay, this is the pocket piece. Because of this style of pocket, um, you don't actually have to have a pocket facing either. I'm always tidying my fabric and then throwing it on the floor. <laughs> uh, if you want the notches on here, uh, go for it. You, it all naturally will sew together. You don't need them if you don't need them. Okay. Oh my gosh, right, Libby? All the makes you didn't take pictures of. I've told you all my fear of when I pass away someday that everybody will bring all the things I made for them. <laughs> that's, my, that's my fear. <laughs> that everybody is going to be like, let's bring all the things Sammy ever made for us to celebrate her. <laughs> They're all gonna drown in an overabundance of stuff I, I made for people because I can't, I couldn't stop making. And I just would, I made this bag sample, do you want it? <laughs> I made you this thing you didn't ask for. Great, Jeremy, thanks. <laughs> that shirt I was telling you about that I really regret um, giving away um, I gave away a lot of things like that and they were very, very distinctive because folkware, first of all. The other place I used to sew a lot of patterns from was the, the sewing workshop, which was one of the really few other indie pattern companies back then. This was like in the 90s. <laughs> and um, she had a lot of asymmetrical garments and um, just... Garments inspired by very modern and and culture cultural um, uh, clothing ideas, and they were really cool. But they were just so unique. It was kind of hard to wear them regularly. Like like one thing I remember really well was this pair of pants that was like a a skirt, but with a one side had a leg hole. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Um, and I made those. I lined those and and made those in like a wool. They were beautiful, gave those away too. They were so distinctive. The problem with this was if I donated them, in our area, donations stayed in that area, friends would call me and be like, Sarami, I just saw your blah, blah, blah shirt here at the shop. What are you doing? Why are you giving that away? <laughs> be like, you know what? If I needed that kind of talk, I would tell my mom I donated it because my mom hates how much I just donate. I used to donate things, you know what I mean? So. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed your comment, Adriana. There you are. Oh, you're gonna use a bed sheet. Oh, a cute cloud print. Okay, I'm missing, you guys are chatting today. Let's see here. Oh yeah, and Mullen's right. They do have limited sizing. I would I would concur on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, there is times where I'm like, I really should delete this video before it automatically up uploads to my cloud, and it is dress code Ceramics makes right. Oh my God, Anna, it's like a fear. <laughs> The fears that broke a family member was talking to the family. <laughs> oh man. 
You know, we really need a private fitting section of our phone. <laughs> Especially if you're around me a lot, I'm like, you're gonna prop your phone up and you're gonna take a video of yourself. None of that two mirror junk. <laughs> that does, that is really hard to do. I don't have two walls to put two mirrors against. So I, I prop my phone up and I do that. <laughs> and then I watch the video and I like scrub back and forth and watch my legs, you know, move the pants and things like that. But yeah, those videos, there's still some in my stream here. All right, so let's see what we got. So we also have our one and a half inch wide elastic, right? Um, and if you want an unsolicited elastic recommendation, I really love braided elastic. Um, I'm not a fan of non-roll. Others might disagree with me and that's totally fine. If you have a preference, use what you like. I personally like braided elastic. This right here is, I think, knitted. This will be good though. It's nice and flat, it's dense. <laughs> Pajama pants are a great pair of pants to fit too, Adriana, I think. me right <laughs> hi Kira how's it going you're lurking okay <laughs> I'm organizing my bin now this is what I do I, I'm gonna put all these pieces away uh, if there was like a draw cord marking on the waistband I'd keep my waistband out but there's not so I'm just gonna put all of these back in the envelope, as my daughter used to say when she was really little. Do you save all the, yeah, they're all there. If you have access, you should still be able to go into those. You should probably clean up your photos. <laughs> I'm absolutely saying that. <laughs> I was, I was Kira. There's a hide option in iPhone. It puts them in a file that's not in the red. Oh, we need to know. I need to learn to do that. I just gotta remember to do that. I'm, I have to be actually pretty good about like, cause I'll take a lot of project photos and I have a folder for each project so that I can find it again or whatever. And I just have to remember to do that. And I have to remember to do it here cause my internet's so much better here. All right, so we have our front pant here. See that little fly? Sorry, it's a little dark. If I brightened it up though, the white pattern pieces just really are hard to see. And here's the back pattern. Let's move you over here. We have the front pattern, the front pant, the back pant. Um, if you're doing the shorts, the sewing will be almost identical. I am doing trim at the cuffs, but I've added that. That was the only thing that wasn't in the subscription box. Someone gave me all of their vintage trims and pipings and things. And so I tried to give them away in the guild and no one's biting. So now I'm using them actually. I'm having kind of fun. I'm gonna wash this tonight. It says it's pre-shrunk. Still gonna wash it. Because it's very specifically says the cord inside this has been pre-shrunk. Nothing about the fabric. Um, you need to go to the past Ask a Zoe question shows Shem, which in the guild is a hashtag Ask a Sewy Question Show replays, or you can go to events in the past. In the tab, the go to events, and then along along the top it says past. Go to those, and then the Pinterest board link is inside the of the event description. I'm sewing the size 16, Karen. My waist is like 34, I think. My hip is 42. What vibes, Elaine? Wait, was the Christine Haynes PK Lounge tune? Oh. 
Yeah, I, exa I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly, Elena. I've actually lived on a commune and it was not like that. <laughs> it was not weird. <laughs> Probably weird that I did, but you know, I actually loved it. It was, it was a really cool place. I worked on the farm there. All right, so here's our pocket. Waistband, oh, waistband's right up here. And then um, like I have these cuffs for the bottoms. So we're set. That's all we need. Easy peasy. How many of you are making, hey, let's do a poll. So you don't, if you don't wanna type in chat, you don't have to. <clears throat> um, are you making? Okay, so if you look at the chat, a poll has popped up. If you don't know how, know how to look at the chat and understand who I'm talking to and why it sounds like I'm talking to myself, under the video, it'll say show chat or hide chat. Just look for that, that text and then it'll pop up and you'll see everybody's comments. If you joined late and you want to watch this from the beginning, um, don't close your browser when I end the stream, just rewind and do that and you can still see chat. Otherwise, if you close your browser when the stream ends and you go to watch the replay, what will happen is um, you won't see chat until tomorrow. It has to render. I can, I can literally see a man in a tunic, Shem, and I'm trying to think of what pattern it was. I'm wondering if it's the Cornell shirt I'm thinking of that Elena brought up. But yeah, she's taking that down just for some updating and isn't there a wardrobe by me one wait why are you making a tunic don't you have quite a lot few projects <laughs> i'm not the project police <laughs> i'm excited about these most people aren't okay maybe you're making the top Oh, actually, let's put this in order. I pulled all this out to put it in order of how I'm going to be sewing it. Uh, we can do it in the order of the instructions if you guys would prefer that too. So it looks like the first thing <clears throat> we do, is this the sewing instructions right here? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. If we're pants pockets, This is just a piping tutorial, right? Okay, pants pockets. Yeah, then the fly. There's really not gonna be many steps. Then the pant front to back, and then the waistband. Okay. I usually like to stack my bin in the order of how I'm gonna sew it. 80% of you not making, but you get, there's a lot of people here today. Yeah, I have to admit, I like the bottoms to sleep in. Oh, I don't sleep in these either. <laughs> I like the bottoms to wear around more than I, I, I wear the top. Yeah, men's tunic, exactly. Oh, I see, Shem, I see. Uh, you have to have the link to access the boards. I don't want people just pinning to our boards, but you can get it by just being in the, in the event. They're still there. We're under, yeah, that would be closer fitting. Yeah, what Elena said, if you've joined the boards, I don't think Shem goes to ask a Zoe question, so maybe he just hasn't pinned something yet. Yeah, exactly, Danny. I think, you know, I think what uh, would be a great thing to complete this set is like a little t-shirt that you wear underneath and then you just use the shirt as an overshirt. 
Yeah, <laughs> so funny. This is a really popular pattern and it's really interesting how many people have made it. And every time I ask about if you sleep in it, people say no. <laughs> I don't want to swap jobs. I've done this biggest fix by screw me. Oh. No. Oh, you guys, my sister loved her hoodie. And I got a picture of her wearing it. It's really cute. And my and my niece liked that hood I made with the cat ears. She's wearing it. I was kind of shocked. So yay. Okay, Shim. Hello, El Eleonora. Welcome. I'm kind of at the end today. The cutting stream is usually pretty quick. That went really fast. There's not very many pattern pieces. There you go, Adriana. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear pants. Is that too much information? Lounge wear, not sleep wear. Exactly. Exactly. Gifts for the win. I know. I I don't know why I fretted over that one so much, but that fabric was just so um, so amazing, you know. And I waited two years to get it, so but she liked it. Can't believe in non stretch pants. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> These are. By far one of the most watched videos I've had on my channel. It'll, it's gonna be really nice to have an updated set of videos. So I really appreciate Needle Sharp giving me this project to sew because that is kind of a nice thing to be able to retouch this pattern and sew it again. Uh, I feel like um, I came to streaming with skills and I've gained more. Like you guys have made my sewing better. So <clears throat> when you have to teach something <laughs> or people challenge you on it, it really helps you, you know, push yourself and get a little better. So, I know, Leah, they're sitting right here. Look how, want to see how beautiful they are? So I have, I sewed these amazing Merriam trousers by Cashmerette, and I decided that I'm going to shorten the, the, well, just this upper torso area. So I pinned it out. Like I'm, I'm shortening it by a lot. See that amount I pinched? <laughs> this is the really cool pattern where the waist expands. They fit me nice, but this is just too long right here and it po poop, poops out. So I'm going to change it. And I'm a little nervous because you know this, this waistband was pretty involved, but it's actually gonna be very straightforward to do. I just haven't had a chance to do anything for me. And then um, I was hired to make the how-to pattern for these pants here. And my daughter said she would take them because I didn't need them. Um, and they are too big for her. But they turned out really nice. They've got, they're just, you know, got the welt pockets in the back. And um, my camera just hates this color, doesn't it? And yeah, they turned out nice. They just, I got to take them in quite a bit on each side. <laughs> so, you know, mustard pants. Do not win in my life. If you remember my Dawn jeans, that's another thing I did. Remember I live streamed how I fixed those. Those were mustard colored as well. I will never wear mustard pants again. Apparently, I can't even get to wear them now. <laughs> so yeah, kind of funny. Lounge wear, sleep wear, only other thing. Well, are you talking about how people talk about it in the sewing world? Because I think loungewear is something like you would open you would open the door and greet the UPS driver wearing your loungewear. Maybe your sleepwear you wouldn't. Hey, Walter, how's it going? Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Oh, that's a smart idea, Raquel. The gusset. Okay, we can we can stop the poll now. <laughs> 81%, 20% of you though, that's quite a few. To be honest, quite a few. Two times seven, that's like 14 people. Nice. It's only 36 votes though. Cool. Okay. Big diamonds solve the problem of, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Gussets, I remember uh, when I was uh, like doing pattern drafting as a freelancer, gussets became really popular and I hated them. <laughs> I got really good at them, but uh, man, at first they would I would make those things so complicated in my head what was happening. And when you grade a pattern with a gusset, that confluence of the crotch right there and the grading, um, the gusset doesn't change much in grading, which is the difference between sizes. I hated that. But it finally, it just it was one of those things where I finally was like, today's the day, I am going to figure this out, I'm gonna understand it, forwards, backwards, and sideways, uh, these will never confuse me again because I'm tired of being confused about these and I would psych myself up out of them like up like through the whole process and it's literally it's yeah you're just sewing a triangle in there and, and I would overcomplicate it in my brain and when I finally developed it so that I just wouldn't grade the gusset it was fine that's problem solved <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, there is a length and short line. Oh, please, no, Shem. <laughs> if you do a folk wear pattern, gussets are really interesting because they're squares, and then you fold them in half diagonally so that they're a little stretchy, and then that's how you get the stretch in your armhole, the, the comfort in the armhole. Exactly, Leah, panini clothing. I mean, for a couple of panini definitions. Loungewear, panini clothing. All right, so tomorrow I'm starting the sewing. I'll be uh, live at the same time, same place, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'll start sewing part one and then part two on Saturday. If you are interested in the top, I will be doing that two weeks from today. I'll be cutting the top and then sewing it Thursday and Saturday, just like this week. And a big thanks to Needle Sharp and Mary for giving me this project. It's gonna be really cute. Where are my bins from? You know what, they came as part of this really ugly shelf over here when I had a factory. Um, I don't honestly recommend them because they don't stack on one on, top of the, uh, one on top of the other. They nest. If you ever wanna talk bins though, Diane, hit me up because I have every style of bin from having the factory. And we should talk about what you're what you're trying to organize and where it's sitting, and how you want to access it. Because it's kind of a big. <laughs> we love our cubbies, <laughs> and this this works really well because they're narrow and they go they're long and they fit the whole shelf, but they're not pretty. You know. And also the bin bin. Yeah, I do have a pattern where you can make your own, but this would be a lot faster and easier. But if you want a custom bin, I have a pattern for that. <laughs> all right, thanks for coming, you guys. I appreciate it. Nice seeing you all. And um, tomorrow I will be sewing these. And if you're interested in checking out the guild, please do. It's a really awesome space. I think we may have just hit our 700th member. And that's pretty exciting. So, yeah. And this month, in the SBS that everyone has access to is about cutting confidence. It's going to be all about, because I polled everyone in the guild. I'm like, what is the least favorite part of your sewing project that you hate? Or the most frustrating? Or the part that takes the longest? Whatever it is that you don't like about the sewing process, which aspect is it? Is it, is it because it's frustrating? Is it because it's lengthy in time? Is it because uh, you're scared to do it? Whatever it is, and what is that thing? And uh, almost like 95% of the responses were about cutting things out and how, and, all, and for all those reasons. So we're gonna have a, uh, a whole skill building session devoted to, cause I, cause I know that you see me and I just cut this out in an hour, but what did I do to get here? And we're gonna talk about that and why am I confident, and what do I do if I make a big mistake and I've cut my fabric out and there's no going back, backup plans and things like that. So that's what our skill building session is. It's the last Friday of the month. If you join the guild, you can check it out. It's part of the Journeyist group, and I will see you tomorrow. I will stop marketing. I hate marketing, I hate it. I'll see you tomorrow, bye.